80% of falls in the home occur in the bathroom. Don't put yourself or a loved one at risk. There's a safe bathing system for everyone's budget. Enjoy a bathing experience that combines safety, comfort, and excellence. If assisted living is not for you, a BCI walk-in tub may well be the answer, giving you the safety and freedom to live independently. A BCI walk-in tub is the most affordable and comfortable walk-in tub in the market today. With our dual drain technology, your tub will drain quickly. And for those that still like the feature of a shower, our two-way bliss gives you both a handheld and overhead shower head. We offer the best financing in the industry with payments as low as $99 per month or no interest, no payments for 18 months with approved credit. For comfort, safety, price, and selection, it's got to be BCI Walk-In Tub. Be one of the first 50 callers and save $1,500. Call 800-354-4377, 800-354-4377 for a free no-obligation in-home consultation. The Turnbike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to another edition of the Turnpike Sports Book Report. I'm Doug Weishaddle here with Dave Weishaddle here for a whip-around look at the latest news that happened over the previous week in the sports betting industry. Uh, keep the press releases coming in. Info at Turnpike Sports Radio. Dot com. We actually have a whole bunch of different stuff to talk about today. We've got our normal national and state reports. We're going to be looking at some numbers coming out of New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, as well as some first half 2002 numbers for the sports betting industry. Some pretty impressive numbers. Too. Very impressive. Very numbers. impressive numbers. Uh, we've in our deal segment. We've got some news from Jack Pocket, as well as another deal between a sports book and a major league baseball team. Yes, yes. Very interesting wrinkle in it too, as a matter of fact. And okay. we'll hit that during that segment. Industry updates. We've got a couple. Uh, uh, we have a launch to talk about from Tennessee. Uh, we have some uh, kiosk installations uh, <laughs> in uh, one of the states, yes. and also we have a new streaming network that is going to be launching soon. Oh, okay. Yep. And in our legislative updates, we've got some really interesting news coming out of both Kansas, surprisingly, mm -hmm. and uh, Massachusetts, as well as some uh, other little notes from uh, Ohio and uh, and Maryland. So okay. uh, let's get started with some numbers. As I said at the top of the show, we've got some first half 2002 numbers that have been released by the American Gaming Association. And when we're talking about first half numbers, I have to admit the number really you know, is inconsequential. It's the percentage of growth. We actually saw in the first half of 2022, $3.04 billion in sports betting revenue oh, wow. for the country. Okay. I mean, when you get to $3.04 billion, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's a number you know most people can't even fathom. But this is a 58.7% increase from the first uh, half of last year. Well, the, the big thing that's different is New York has mobile now. Yes. So for the first half of this year, New York uh, just crushed the numbers with regard to mobile sports. Well, betting. according to the American Gaming Association, what else contributed, not just New York, but there were six new markets okay. that launched over the past year. Yeah, that helps too. And uh, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. And, I mean, when you look at the markets that launched over the last year, it was Arizona. Yeah, very good market. Yeah, yeah. You also uh, you had the dropping of the in-person registration in Illinois. Yep. And uh, New York was there, and um, you know it's it's incredible to see three point oh four billion. That, like I said, sixty percent ahead of last year. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And it, we're it, only halfway through last year with the new markets, yeah. and, uh, and and seriously, let's be honest, it's. A lot of it's New York. Yeah. The, the big story in sports betting was New York. Yeah. So. And again, I'm very curious to see what the third and fourth quarter bring because it's football time. Yeah. And, and not to dwell on New York, but this is the first football <laughs> yeah, season have... that uh, 
New York will yes. have mobily. So you, you it should have, be interesting. You have to keep in mind that New York has yet to have a football season. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be. I, I'm not the New York fan club, but I call them as I see them. Yeah. It's, uh, it'll know, be interesting. Well, it'll uh, be very interesting to see. But we New, have, New York can pump its chest. So well, it's, uh, continuing the New York trend. Okay, we're well, going to talk, well talk about New York. We're going to talk top 10. Okay. Uh, we have the top 10 sports betting states by handle through the first half of 2022. Has, uh, Do I need to say New York is number one? Yeah, New. Uh, l- let me guess the top five. New York. Well, it's been are you, like. Are this. you going in order? Or are you just doing the yeah, top five? N- uh, number number one should be New York. Number right. two should be New Jersey. Number right. three, I think, is Illinois. Yep. Number four would probably be Nevada. Mm-hmm. And five, uh, Pennsylvania. Yep, and that ends the three and a half billion dollar club. Everything else is below three and a half billion dollars okay. on the list. We have Arizona number six with two point okay. seven billion, right. Colorado two point six billion, Michigan two two and a half billion, mm-hmm. Virginia two point four billion, and Indiana ro- rounds out the top ten two point three billion the first half of the year. I want to make a prediction for next year. I, I think when we look at the top five in handle anyway for sports betting, I I think maybe Ohio. And Pennsylvania might take Pennsylvania's spot. I, th- I think next year will be Ohio 5 and Pennsylvania 6. I'm just wondering when you're going to start seeing maybe Nevada slip out of the top five. Yeah, it's, it's going to get it's, close. They're dropping and dropping and dropping. I mean, so. the way Illinois is running, I mean, I, Ohio may jump both Nevada and Pennsylvania. Yeah, Ohio might do that. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving Nevada a tip of the hat because they've been there the longest. Yes. And, you know, they're the old granddad for sports betting. But, you know, look, I mean, when, when, you, when you deal with this, it's population density. And yes. when yes. it comes down to it, Nevada, uh, Las Vegas is still a, uh, you know, a city in the desert. And, 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 <laughs> so, also, and also, and it's a tourist destination. So. You, you also have to factor in with the new uh, states coming online. Sure. I mean, sure. not just online, I mean, just launching. Yeah. There's a lot more being offered, like in Ohio, where they have the potential of 50 to 60 locations. Yeah. That yeah. have, not whether it's mobile, sports betting kiosks, plus or stadiums. Ag- again, it's population density. Yes. That Ohio has a lot of big cities, two really big c- cities, yes. Cleveland and Cincinnati. And, you know, that's just. You know that 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 figures in and greatly to the handle. Don't forget about the crowds they get for the college football games there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, the Ohio State the Ohio and State. Cincinnati Bearcats were very good last year with regard to the football, but I, but but like I said, they're not going to be available for this football season. Hey, somebody better but, run it, rush out and get the sports betting market. Yeah. For yeah, Ohio so. T-shirts there. Uh, going to some of the state reports, Pennsylvania reported their numbers. Again, most of the states are down in handle and revenue because it's a slow time of the month. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it, it's very slow. But I'm looking at the market shares here. And between fan, uh, between uh, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Fandle, all, all oh, over the place. Fandle is crushing it. Uh, Fandle had a 40% market share in terms of handle in Pennsylvania. Wow. Okay. Uh, DraftKings had 24%. Mm-hmm. That's the closest one. Well, I, I'm, I'm surprised Fandle in New York... Well, they they are the Fandle one in, in New York. York since oh, you're jumping over to New oh, York. Oh, you got the numbers. Okay, I okay. have those numbers. You got those numbers. Uh, Fandle. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at my notes right here. Fandle had 42 percent of the market in terms of handle wow. for New York. That's incredible. Um, in terms of overall, I, anytime you see sports betting numbers, you're going to see Fandle leading the market share. Mm-hmm. The one place I've noticed where Fandle doesn't lead in market share in terms of overall, like gaming. Mm-hmm. Casino and sport is Michigan. Real okay. Is uh, that MGM? That's MGM. So I, every time I think Michigan, I think MGM. So is there a reason for no, that? No, no. I just, is I, just I, two I M's together. I don't know why. I, I just you know I I always think they're the biggest one in Michigan. So well, uh, cool. like I said, we were talking about Pennsylvania here. A couple benchmarks. By the way, before we get off the market share, mm-hmm. do you want to take a shot at who's three and four in the state? In what state? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, um, three and four. Fandle one. Um, DraftKings is two. We just said that. DraftKings is two. Um, I was surprised I, at this. I was tempted to say Caesars, but um, I, uh, I'm seeing a lot of commercials for Bet Parks. I'm not sure. Sh- they just recently launched. I'm not sure so. if they're up there, but. <sighs> 
I don't, I don't even know if this is in. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of what commercials I've seen. I've seen a lot of Bet Three Sixty Five as well. I have to admit, I've, I haven't seen a commercial for the, okay the, the, the right. fourth spot. Okay, the third spot I always see. Okay, I'm gonna say and I'm, uh, I'm more curious of if you can guess you know, the number four one. Yeah, I'm gonna so be Caesars and then Barstool. Uh, it's Bet MGM then Barstool. Bet MGM then Barstool. Yeah. Okay, Barstool right. has six and a half percent of the market share. Bet MGM thirteen and a half. Okay, all right. A um, couple other benchmarks. To I'm talk shocked about. I got the fourth one, though. <laughs> I was surprised. With Good Barstool. for Barstool. Yeah. Uh, Barstool actually extended a streak that they have going in Pennsylvania. 23 straight months of $20 million or more in handle. Good. Good. Um, let's see. Caesars passed. They're not it. in New Jersey. No. Uh, I, no. I don't know. They will be because I, they're supposed I to be taking so. over the score bet. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. So, so. we'll see exactly what they do in New Jersey. Uh, but Caesars in Pennsylvania passed $15 million in all time handle. DraftKings passed three point three billion in all time wow. handle. There's a there's a discrepancy right there between those yeah. two. Um, for uh, year to date, DraftKings has forty million in gross gaming revenue year to date in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Bet Rivers cleared one point four billion dollars in all time handle in the state. Yeah, but, uh, by the way, my uh, play Sugar House in New Jersey completely switched over to Bet Rivers. Yes, so, yes. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's part of the branding. I'm wondering what's going to happen so. in Connecticut. Because they have played Sugar House in Connecticut, yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming it's going to be better. And, and, Connecticut and it was kind of a gradual thing. It was uh, really uh, play Sugar House and uh, slash Bet Rivers uh, every day. I I saw it changing and changing. Then all of a sudden, bang! It's I, just I just Bet remember Rivers. one day looking at my phone and I see the light blue Sugar House symbol. Mm -hmm. The next day, I see the dark blue, yellow. Oh, on my on my phone, my app, it just yeah. completely changed. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so. but no, I, I, I guess they're switching con. Uh, they're, they're probably dropping to play Sugar House brand at some point. I don't know. But because uh, so. uh, you still have a couple play Sugar Houses out yeah. there. Like I said, Connecticut is a big one. They're the ones they did the deal with the uh, mm -hmm. Connecticut lottery. So uh, we'll see if they switch that over. Yeah. By, by the way, people have asked me why why is it called uh, Sugar House? And uh, it was started as a casino on the banks of the Delaware in Philadelphia. And it was the site of the an old candy factory. So they called the uh, casino Sugar House. A little bit of history, yeah, there right you there. Go. So that, that's uh, everyone thought that was a strange name for for anything, but it's uh, it's uh, giving a nod to the old candy factory on the banks of the Delaware River. This show is not just fun; it's yeah, educational. No, it's, it's, Look at uh, that. You know, uh, going over to New Jersey again. Uh, New Jersey uh, had a low handle again. Uh, for, because it was for the month of it's August. July. <laughs> it's no, no, well, this is July. <laughs> oh, it's July. Well, it's yeah. July, August. It's such yeah. a slow it's month. It's a slow time. Yeah. But yeah. overall, with the July report, New Jersey passed $29 billion in all-time handle. Wow. Great. Uh, $6 billion in 2002 handle, mm -hmm. and $45 million in 2022 taxes. Okay. That's, uh, the that's one, why states do it, for the tax money. I, I always like looking at, and this is something I've been noticing more and more often, the parlay information that's coming out. You know, that that's something I'm hearing about uh, more and more. Yes. It, it seems like the sports books are really focusing in on and marketing their parlays. So it's... Well, and, People and love the exotics. You I, shouldn't really play them, but they they love playing them. I have to I have to credit Chris Altruda. Yep, he okay. does an incredible job keeping track of some of these stats. Sure, sure, and one of the things he's brought out to a lot of people's attention is the parlay segment of the uh, industry. Well, who, he's the guy who really turned my attention to it because yes. I, I read him and he starts talking about parlays. So, you know, it's it's yeah, it's really became an important part of the marketing devices of uh, sportsbook well, for both New Jersey and Illinois. Parlays are huge. Yeah, in in New Jersey, uh, parlay revenue twenty million dollars in, in revenue. This mm -hmm. is revenue. The handle's huge uh, for eleven months in a row. In New Jersey for yeah. parlay revenue. Yeah. Uh, for July, $126.74 million handle for parlays alone. Mm -hmm. That was 24% of the total handle of the state. $22.93 million in revenue from the parlays. That's over 50% of the total revenue for the state. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Illinois is the same way. $140 million in handle, which was 22% of the revenue. 22% uh, of the handle. $20.22 million in revenue for, this is Illinois, 49.5% mm -hmm. of the total hand, of the total revenue for the state. Well, look, I mean, I, I, I say there, parlays are, you know, what, what the old saying, you know, parlays yes. don't 
build your bankroll, they build sports books. Why is it not on a t-shirt somewhere? But I, I keep doing it too. I mean, because I, you know, you get so close to them. I, I've been losing parlays by one game. I told you last week I lost a four-leg baseball parlay by half a run. So you know, I'm thinking, yes. you know, ah, oh, so close. Next time I'll get them, and 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 I don't. I well, don't. let's finish up the number segment. Okay. With New York. Every week we're going to have a New York uh, little piece in the uh, number segment because mm-hmm. they release them weekly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mobile. Um, again, this is sixth straight week of a handle of under $200 million, sub $200 million well, handles. Six straight week. Well, I mean, th- it's, that's, that's the time the of year. time of year for it's it. time of year. Uh, revenue's been okay. I mean, we had one or two weeks of really low revenue where they had a couple bad weeks revenue-wise, but revenue's been around $20 million most of the time. I think four out of the last six weeks, we've had $20 million in revenue. That's, that's New York. This right. is New York. Okay. Um, let's see. Again, Fandle uh, was 42% of the handle for the week. And the top four, it's always Fandle, DraftKings, Caesars, and BetMGM for okay. New York right now. All right. That may change down the road, but right now, those four, almost 93% of the total handle. Wow. For that week, so all the other sports books out there are carving up about seven percent left. Okay. Uh, overall, uh, New York has passed for the current fiscal year, which, okay. by the way, began April third. Okay, so not January first. It's only a couple weeks. Yes, in a couple months. The uh, the state passed five billion dollars in terms of handle for the current fiscal year. Wow. So, uh, but again, if you, if you look at New Jersey and New York, New Jersey, the entire year is $6 billion for, what is it, four months in New York? April, May, June, July. Yeah. $5 billion. Wow. So uh, the monster is still there, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's lurking. Yeah. And I think you're going to see It's resting up for football season. Yes, yes. And I, like I said, I'm curious to see how New York does in the football season. It's going to be fun to watch. Let's uh, head on over to some deals. As I said at the top of the show, we got a couple different deals to talk about. Uh, real quick, this is an interesting stock filing. I'm going to start off there. Okay. The exciting world of stocks. Stocks. Um, Penn, Penn Entertainment, formerly Penn National Gaming. Mm-hmm. Penn Entertainment filed a some paperwork with the SEC. It's an 8K filing for the stock people out there. You know what that is. Yep. Um, they are going to pick up their option and buy the remaining stock in Barstool Sports. Okay. They're going to own 100% of the company. Wow. All right. So it'll be kind of interesting to see where they go with this. I know Penn Entertainment just recently rebranded to that new name mm-hmm. where they want to focus on not just the casino and sports betting, but the entertainment side that okay. they're offering. All right. Uh, not necessarily like TV shows and, you know, content like that, but just they offer more than just gaming. Okay. So that's why they changed their name. But they're going to be owning 100% of Barstool. That will happen in the first quarter of 2023. All right. That will be completed there. Okay. Uh, uh, Jack Pocket became the official sponsor of the ESPN New York Sports app. Really? Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, I thought you were going to say they uh, did a deal with another team. No. They've been no. doing professional teams lately. They will. Yeah. They have like eight or nine yeah, deals with professional so. teams. So what do they do with ESPN? They are the official sponsor, the exclusive sponsor, oh, I'm sorry. exclusive. Of the ESPN New York Sports app. So the radio stations app. Uh, they're going to be, you're going to see oh, Jack wait, wait, all over the place. Oh, wait, wait. Is that 98.7? 98.7. Okay. 98. Seven. Sure. Uh, they're going to have, they're going to be giving out special access to different ESPN New York events, the radio station events. Okay. Uh, you're going to be hearing more reads on the air from 98.7 about Jack Pocket. Great, great. Um, and they're going to be all over the place. Great. There's also yeah. going to be a tile on ESPN New York okay. website 
that just goes right to jack pocket. Oh, all right. Uh, the the big deal that's happened uh, over the past week, and there are a lot of deals happening in the sports betting industry, a lot of dealing with the tech side as well as some other uh, industry uh, deals. But Superbook okay. did a, a deal with the Baltimore Orioles. Okay. All right. Long-term deal. They didn't say how many years, but it was a multi-year deal. All right. Uh, and this is all dependent upon you know approval and regulation sure, licensing. Sure, sure. Um, they will be bringing the first ever retail sports betting lounge to Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Wow, that's pretty cool. No word on whether or not they're talking about a retail book, though. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they do that. What's the latest on Maryland, anyway? I mean, uh, Maryland is looking at Super Bowl. Super Bowl for mobile betting. For mobile betting. Right. They, they, they already they, have retail. They, they have, have retail, retail and everything like that. Everyone's just waiting for uh, mobile. They It seems like they've been waiting for years for this. They are at, I believe... They're at over 450 days from passing mobile betting to launching mobile okay. betting. And if they're looking at Super Bowl, you're talking about maybe 500 days okay. before they launch right. online sports okay. betting. Yeah. But they did they did make the mention that Super Bowl is their goal. All right. But the regulators also said, don't quote them on that because it may not happen. Okay. but so, so we'll, uh, see. we'll see about Maryland. So we but. can expect to see a Super Bowl at the uh, we're going to see Camden Superbook Yards. branding everywhere. We're going to see a lounge. Okay, that's the lounge Superbook. Okay. Uh, we're going to see Superbook all over the place on the Orioles. So we're looking media. for a lounge at yeah. Superbook no, lounge. No retail book. No retail Just book. A, a Superbook lounge at the Camden basically Yards. a bar. Okay, all yeah. right. Um, a box <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a box. The one interesting aspect of this deal, and I, I have to go back and take a look at some of these other sports betting deals with the professional teams. Mm. Uh, this actually may be the first uh, deal I, I've seen that includes a different type of social media. And I'm just going to say what they did here. Sportsbook will also be featured on the MLB. Superbook. Superbook will be featured on the MLB Ballpark app. Oh, okay. I had to go look this up because right. I'm not familiar with the Orioles, to be honest with you. But if, if people Orioles fans know this, but the, if it's the the entire MLB, app? this is where I, this is what I had to look up. Okay, the MLB Ballpark app is the name of the official app for Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Oh, okay, all right, all right. And I had to look this up. It's a very interesting app because it's not only you get tickets and uh, you know uh, you get maps of the uh, stadium and the surrounding area, you get parking, all that stuff. They have a section where if you're using the app, you can actually create a journal for yourself of your trip to the Camden Yards. Oh, okay. That's pretty fun. It's it's okay. very unique. I've never seen a deal that includes the uh, the the baseball fields, the baseball stadiums app. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how too many teams have that, though. Do they? I, I know I, City Field may have I know one. a lot of teams have that. I don't know the different particular features of each app and how they differ but yeah there's there's a bunch of stadiums that have the app and you know i i, I don't know if they're doing as much as can the yard is but you know well again i i just said i thought ml i saw mlb bar ballpark app in the mm -hmm. in the news story and i'm thinking they did an entire national deal no no i guess and it's, it's just, just camden yard it's it's kind of interesting naming the name of that app versus what it is it's mm -hmm. not a national app it's just for camden yards i always called it camden yards i never knew it was oriole park at camden yards oh, okay but i guess maybe camden yards has a lot more to offer than just the ballpark uh, I I've never been to Camden Yards. That, that's what I'm saying. But, uh, I, I, you know, I I, like everyone Camden loves Yards, it. So you know, it's the first like of the old style ballparks that were created. So uh, the first it, of the old style, or yeah, the first it, of the new style. It it's 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 new, but it, they kind of tried to make it look kind of historic and like kind of a throwback kind of thing. I, I I like that style of park though. It's it's nice. It's it's actually I I've heard it called one of the first modern ballparks. Oh no, I I, I always kind of like a well, the it is modern, are, but it's all kind the of a throwback. It, yeah. kind of a homey kind of feel. They, everyone they, says about it. They so. did it like a vintage feel to yeah, the new park yeah, kind of yeah. thing. I have to go down and take a look. So, uh, but that's it for the deals the, this week. Uh, let's head on over to some industry updates. couple news and notes to talk about in terms of industry updates. Uh, I mentioned at the top we have a launch coming out of uh, Tennessee, but it's not a Tennessee book. Okay. I found this kind of interesting. Southland Casino Hotel, which is in Arkansas. All right. They launched the Betley sports betting app. That's their, that's their sports betting app. 
Uh, they have now launched it in two other states. Okay. They're, they had West Virginia and they have their, their own Arkansas one. Okay. They have now gone into Tennessee. Oh, all right. Tennessee, may, um, it's Betley.com. All right. You can go with website or an app. All right. All throughout Tennessee. And it's now the 13th sports book for Tennessee. And they are only online. 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 Yeah. No retail books whatsoever. It's only online. Well, notice I just said 13th sports book because yeah. there's no d- differentiation between online and retail because there is no retail yet. Yeah. I'm yeah. wondering if th- Tennessee at some point is going to get brick and mortar. I don't know. It's been going pretty well for Tennessee. I don't know if they want to change anything like it, but it, it's, uh, you know, it's it's so much fun watching any kind of game at a retail sports book. So, you know, that, that that's always a great experience. So, Well, if, you, if you're down in I Tennessee. I go there for the, the experience. I mean, if I want to bet, I, I rarely stand in line to go place a bet. I, I have the yeah. app on my phone. So, I you know, even if I'm in a sports book, I, I still bet on my phone, well, but... You know, uh, again, but the again, atmosphere is great. Yeah, you have the the apps, you have the tellers, uh, and you have the kiosks. You have yeah. three different ways to do a bet in a sports book. Yeah, and also it doesn't have to be with that sports book if yeah. you're using the app. Well, too. yeah, I don't. I don't. I yeah. You know, if I'm sitting down, I don't leave my seat, so I yeah. have my phone with me. Why bother? So somebody somebody's got to come up with a uh, kiosk that's in a tablet where the uh, the server can just bring over. Oh, the sports no, that, that's a little too much. Well, you don't have to get up. I mean, it's <laughs> just another it's another much. added amenity yeah. that, you know, maybe uh, retail books may want to have, a traveling kiosk. Okay. Uh, going over to Louisiana. Louisiana is doing extremely well with their sports betting industry. Uh, according to the Louisiana State Police, they just installed around 280 sports betting kiosks around the state. Wow. But okay. only in the uh, locations where... It's legalized. Because, yeah, because the parishes, right. which are counties yes. in Louisiana, certain counties don't have sports betting, right. or it's illegal to sports bet. In other counties or parishes, it's legal to place I'm, a sports bet. I'm still bet. very impressed with Louisiana's geofencing. Yeah, the geofencing is amazing now. But the, you the, couldn't do that probably ten years no. ago. It'd be like uh, the geofencing would be uh, honestly be a mess. I don't know if you could have done it five years ago. I, I don't know. Boy, the technology is amazing. It's getting though. better and better. They're fine tuning everything. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but again, it's, it's going to two hundred eighty or two hundred eighty five, something like that. It was some kind of number like that. Uh, Seventeen locations throughout the state, all sports betting kiosks. Uh, the initial report was that they were installed. Some of them weren't online yet, but they were installed. Okay, so they they go. Even the kiosks have to go through a certain stage of testing. Sure, sure. Once they're installed, they just don't flick on a switch and plug them in. Uh, we have a new streaming network out there. Okay. Uh, Bally Sports Plus. Everyone has a plus. Everyone's got a plus. Everyone has a plus. Uh, this is done in conjunction with the regional sports networks that Bally owns, Bally mm-hmm. Sports. Yep. Uh, they're going to be launching. The official launch date is September 26th. They've got a couple markets online already. They've got Detroit. Kansas City, Florida, uh, Sun, which is, I believe it's uh, Arizona. Arizona, yeah. And Wisconsin. Okay. And they're already online? They are they did the soft launch kind of okay. thing. Okay. So, uh, but they're going to be, wherever you see the Bally's Regional Sports Networks, they're going to have a Bally Sports Plus. Okay. Uh, it's nineteen ninety nine a month okay. or $190 per year. All right. And you're going to have access to the NBA and NHL broadcasts. You're going to have a lot of college broadcasts as okay. well through that. Uh, basically, if you're a regional fan, you're going to be wanting that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean, in the Northeast, I guess there's less of a demand for that because I don't think they carry the teams. That well, I mean, if you want to see teams out west or south, you know, I guess you, I guess people in the east can get Bally's Plus, right? Well, Bally, Bally Sports, I don't know if there's a Bally Sports Network in the northeast. No, I, I don't think so. I have to look around And, and to be honest with you, how can you compete with Yes Network? Well, no, well, we have our regional. I mean, yeah. I, I know uh, Philly has Comcast, yes. or if they call oh, okay. it, still call it Comcast. I still hear people complain about <laughs> and Comcast. New York is SNY and yeah. MSG. And There's so many different. Yes Network. So. The, the East Coast has so many. And also you got up in, uh, what is it, New England, you have Nesson Plus just launched. You have Nesson, and then you also have Comcast yeah. or, you know, so. But I don't think there's an app for New England up for Comcast. Yeah. I know I there's Nesson Plus. There's a, there's a bet. Nesson or Nesson Bet. Nesson Bet. Nesson or, Bet. I haven't yeah. seen anything. That, that's from there strictly yet, online. Okay, that's yeah. uh, that's 
online. All yeah. right. Okay. So, uh, and they're, they're starting to get into it. I mean, that's an ultra local uh, site, nestlebets.com. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's like the city cast for Rush Street. Yeah. You know, that's what they're doing. So that's it for this week's industry updates. It was a very short segment because we've got legislative updates to talk about coming up right after this. Today's legislative update, we're going to go from Massachusetts to Kansas to Maryland. We've got some Ohio if we have time. But the big story is Kansas. Uh, Kansas came out and said that they're throwing out dates. They're throwing out dates. The yep. official launch date by, by Kansas is September 8th, mm-hmm. soft launch September 1st. Okay. Now what that means is when September 1st rolls around, not necessarily they're going to hit September 1st. They may hit a day or two later, but they're trying to get a soft launch started before football season starts okay. so people can start putting some football bets down and also they can work the bugs out yes and see if there's well that's problems. what a soft launch soft does launch does yeah and they're officially going to be launching the industry the online sports book industry on september 8th and if that happens they are going to be the fastest from signing to launching okay uh you're talking if they hit the september 8th date it's going to be 81 days since they signed the bill into law that's impressive uh the the quickest was iowa before that Okay. 95. All right. 95 days. Broke Iowa's record. Uh, uh, Arizona, 148 days. Okay. Indiana, 149 days. All right. Now, as we said earlier in the show, Maryland is quickly approaching 500 days. Yeah. Which, by comparison, wow, yeah. That is just amazing. That um, Well, well, M- Maryland has sports betting. They just don't have online sports betting. Right. Okay. And I think Maryland. So I don't know if they're in the same category because uh, Kansas has nothing. Right. <laughs> so, Kansas has nothing. Know, so. But uh, again, yeah, so. Mar- Maryland's, I, I think, you know, we talked earlier when we said Maryland looked at, sort of announced a, don't quote me on this, mm-hmm. uh, Super Bowl launch yeah. for the state from the regulars. I said that, yeah. but don't quote them. I wonder if Maryland's an indication where you made the law too complicated. I don't know. I don't know what Maryland's doing. Uh, I, it's uh, it's just that there's so many different hoops to jump through to get the online sports betting. There's so many different interests involved. But con- I love I love what Kansas did. You know, yeah. they didn't fool around. You know, they, they should be an example for other states who are thinking about jumping in on sports betting. And I think you're referring to Massachusetts. Well, <laughs> it, it, that's you know that that. Physically, I think they're ready. You know, they got to get the the software and the people hired and for retail anyway. Well, so. let's let's jump to Massachusetts okay. because mm-hmm. you just brought that up in terms of uh, what's going on up there. Massachusetts just had another committee meeting, okay. commission meeting, where they had presentations done by the five license holders, current five license holder mm-hmm. casinos. You have the three casinos and the two racetracks. Okay, um, kind of interesting. Uh, statements coming from some of the uh, properties. You have, um, uh, let me get my notes here so I can go through these real quick. Um, the uh, OTBs, Rainham Park wants to have one partner for retail, one partner for uh, online. Okay. If they're allowed. All right. Since those regulations have not been promulgated yet and approved, you don't know if they're going to be allowed to have two different partners. Okay. So they want they put that on the record. They want two different partners. Suffolk Downs is in talks with a lot of different books to. By the way, they're not even a racetrack no, anymore. They're not. They're, they're, they're <laughs> a property. They're they're, a property. They're, they're, they're a vacant lot. The, yeah. Well, no, they uh, still have the they, they still have the clubhouse. They still have the clubhouse and stuff like that. They they recently had a fire, so yes. I, I'm not even sure what was damaged there. But uh, um, it was actually the one of the big clubhouses up okay. top. They so, had an electrical fire. So it was, they, outs- it was outside. So the are they park, talking about the redoing that area to make it a? They a, haven't a said what they plan okay. on doing, but they want to uh, at least announce both online and retail sports betting deals in the coming weeks, mm-hmm. not months, okay. coming weeks. Penn, uh, Penn Entertainment said they're going to be opening up a temporary retail book at Plain Ridge. Okay. Uh, from what I heard, it's the OTB section, which is the big hall type thing yeah. where they have all the TVs around sure. it. Sure. I, I still think there's a couple other places in that property that the sports book would do. It probably will with. be. So, like you so, said, there's a temporary one. Yes. Um, let's see. BetMGM, and this is one of the ones you're talking about, BetMGM, which is an MGM Springfield. Uh, they said as soon as they get approval, they could be up and running within 90 days. Yeah, yeah, no. So even when you get approval, you're not going to be launching. You're not going to be seeing retail sports books launching. Yeah, immediately. not the next day. No, but, you're yeah. not. You're not. You may see them. I still think you're looking at 
late October, November, possibly to see a retail book open. Okay. You may hit the tail end of the football season. Yeah. Yeah. Which is actually, that's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the most interesting statement I heard in the commission meeting, because I actually sat and listened to it. Okay. It was all day, basically. Okay. Encore Boston Harbor, uh, win. Mm-hmm. win bet, they have the Winbet Sports Bar. Yeah. Soon to be Winbet Sports Book. Yeah. Um, Encore Boston Harbor said they want to put kiosks, sports betting kiosks, in the parking garage. That's weird. I don't even know. Are they talking about, I know, I know from the parking they have, you know, you walk through glass doors waiting yeah. for the elevator. Is that where they're talking about? They can't be talking about, out, I mean, how they, security-wise, how I, they I would keep them secure it, and things I'm, like I'm that. I'm assuming they're talking about the elevator lobbies. Okay. I um, hope so. <laughs> And uh, it, it would be interesting. I, I'm assuming they're throwing out ideas now. They're going to get detailed plans later on. Well, so. I, I, again, I think it's a matter of since they're, everything's in the formative stages for yeah. Massachusetts, now is the time to throw out all the wacky ideas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's actually a very interesting idea to put it in a parking garage. Very dangerous idea in uh, well, certain areas. For, for security purposes, yes, you know, and, uh, and also you got to check ages and make sure people are of the right age so they can place a bet. So I, I don't know how they do that, but, you know, it's if they have a cohesive plan and it makes yes. sense, who knows? And last but not least, for this week, Ohio, uh, even though the August 15th deadline for those type uh, uh, C licenses has expired and closed. Mm-hmm. They're still accepting applications. They're going to continue accepting applications. It's just that they're not going to be guaranteed a January 1st launch date. Okay. So we're seeing, we got over 1,200 businesses already. Wow. <laughs> I even saw one, seven giant Eagle supermarket locations have applied for licenses. Wow. Okay. So we're going to see sports betting in, uh, you know, I, yeah, I was about to say we're going to see sports betting in supermarkets and variety stores. And well, you know, they have to be, they um, have to be okay. I haven't heard anything about airports. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it. I know in Las Vegas airports, they have oh, slot La- machines everywhere. Las Vegas, they they have slot machines in supermarkets. Yeah, out in Las Vegas. Well, that, so, Ohio's going to be the same. Well, way with who the knows if they allow it? Yeah, so, it should be uh, interesting. But uh, again, I haven't heard of an airport applying for a sports betting license yeah. for kiosks. Hmm. But that's it for this week's book report. Uh, as always, keep the press releases coming in, info at turnpikesportsradio.com. If you've been watching us on TV, the ticker has even more stories that we didn't have a chance to talk about. And after this show is released, you're going to see the book report in its print version, which has even more information than we were able to cover in this half hour. Go to turnpikesports.us and click on the blog button, and you'll see the print version of the book report there. And that'll do for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.